Some momentum being built now. That's back-to-back -back birdies. That sets a positive tone for the player, doesn't it? After that hole, this player is currently in first place with Colin Morikawa in second. The Copperhead course at Innisbrook can really bite you, especially if you're slightly wayward, and there's one of those holes right here at the third, Rich. Decisions to be made. The fairway narrows up should you take driver out. Also the water on the right. So players more than likely laying back with some kind of fairway wood. Oh, terrific approach and a chance for birdie here at the third. Seven feet to the cup. But what a start. This is impressive. That is definitely a confidence builder. Currently at minus three for the round. The fourth hole, the first of the par threes on the property, and you've got to be dialed in on your number. This is a challenging par three, no doubt about it, Luke. This green pitches from right to left and from front to back, making it almost impossible to get it super close unless you have a perfect number into this par three. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one? Setting up this part 10 feet from the cup. And this effort by Justin Thomas... He's currently in third place. Hold this putt, and you'll become second on the leaderboard. And after that effort, this is how the field is shaping up. Our current leader is up by a whopping seven shots now. Stretching out over 600 yards means the par five fifth is no snack. It is. Luke, I rarely say that par fives on the PGA Tour are challenging, but this is definitely one of them. It's an uphill tee shot and a second shot that is downhill moving from right to left that's completely blind for these players. There is a tree about 100 yards out, which is going to be something they aim at when they lay up. Third shot, though, is very basic down the hill to a fairly flat grain surrounded by some bunkers. More than likely, most players are going to have to lay it up on this par five. This one looks to be heading towards the green. Well, that's beautifully judged. Of all the shots that I like the most, that one ranks right up there. And racking up their fifth birdie of the day. And that will take him to five under. And this is quality play, still on top of the leaderboard. The sixth hole at Innersbrook's Copperhead course, Rich. It's a challenging one, isn't it? If you find the fairway off the tee here, you are an amazing human being. The fairway tilts from right to left very significantly. Holding the fairway is almost impossible. Well, with a pocket full of FedEx Cup points over the last half a dozen starts or so, this player certainly has been delivering consistent results and pushing for wins or winning, Rich. Do you expect that to continue here this week? Luke, absolutely. Week in and week out, this player has consistently performed at the highest level. i got to believe he's a lot of people's favorites to win this tournament. Oh, he's up, Tiger. It's just about three feet away. Leading by nine strokes after that one. Standing on the seventh tee, players get to breathe a sigh of relief having the sixth behind them. You know, Luke, this is sneaky hard, to be fair. You don't need driver, and so you might get lulled to sleep a little bit by taking three-word out just for position. Any misses to the right or the left, and you'll be blocked out by some pretty gnarly trees. The green tilts from right to left ever so slightly, and watch out for those deep bunkers fronting this green. They'll grab your golf ball in a hurry. Always love these opportunities, especially when it's for birdie. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. He sits in first position. And this is quite an astonishing performance by our leader. Their advantage now out to double digits. I'm not sure if the chase back is good enough to catch them. Hoping for a bounce here, preferably to the left. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently in second place, hoping to overtake the leader. Let's return to live play now. This would be a great up and down. Ooh, that almost went down. Just a tiny putt is all that remains. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. Looks like they got all of that one. That's on a good line. Justin Thomas, major champion, world number one player. 
really has all the attributes, doesn't he, Rich? He does. His focus on the, his own game is, is amazing. I, I think that this kid really understands how to play the game. He's got all the shots, but he doesn't try and get up there and hit it as hard as he can every single time. He gets out there and he learns how to play the game, hit the finesse shots when you need it, take some risks when you ha when you need to, but also back off when you don't need to. This kid is a real deal, complete game from head to toe. Game with the nine iron, I think. Well, this one's going right at the flag. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's just coming off a drop shot on that last hole. They've chosen to club down here. Right on four feet. Should make this one. This for a birdie, birdie run. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. Very few parts of the golf course make you feel comfortable, but chance of birdie at 11. Finally, we have a birdie hole. Just avoid that bunker down the left-hand side. Find the right-hand side of the fairway. And you can go ahead and chase one up there. Even if you can't get it on the green in two, that front bunker is not a bad leave. But beware, there are some trees over on the right-hand side that could block you out. Oh, well struck. This drive's heading for the fairway in my eyes. Sitting at eight under. Currently in top spot. Let's take a look at Colin Morikawa from moments ago. Our player currently in second, making a really great shot. And back to the course with the live action. And here we are with the third shot. And this putt is for a big four on the scorecard. Ooh, right by the hole. And the putt drops, and we're moving on. Well, a birdie's also in your heart, standing on the 12th tee, a short par four, Rich. Decisions to be made? Just a long iron or a hybrid for this tee shot here, Luke. Second shot, we're coming in with some kind of short iron to a green that's protected by a deep bunker in the front. This looks to be heading to the green. That's a terrific shot and sets up a birdie opportunity here at the 12th. Six feet remaining to the cup. Their short game today has been absolutely sublime fun to watch. Well, with that good play, this person is now in first on the leaderboard with Colin Morikawa in second. And this is quite an astonishing performance by our leader. Their advantage now out to double digits. I'm not sure if the chase back is good enough to catch them. Second shot here on the 13th. Wow, that almost went in the hole. Well, a lovely opportunity to save par here. Nice little putt to hole, that one. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Coming off a bogey on the last hole, Let's take a look at the leaderboard. What a shot! Almost went in the bucket. Now at minus nine for the day. And I don't give the rest of the field much hope today. Our leader is way out in front in this final round. And that's a nice strike. This one should find the fairway. Second shot here on the 14th. This one should find the rough. Not far from the green here, just in the greenside rough. And here we are with their fourth. Mm -mm. Straight out of the top draw. Gotta say, his short game is phenomenal. Managing to maintain their position on the leaderboard after that effort. Three holes remaining, Luke. This is getting awfully fun. This looks to be hit pretty well from where I'm standing. 
Yeah, not a bad effort, that one. Up onto the green and a chance to hold your putt. Ouch, that hurts. Putting for a par now. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? It's time to check on the leaderboard. After that hole, this player is currently in first place with Colin Morikawa in second. Three holes remaining, folks. Hang on to your hats. This is going to be a wild and woolly finish. Yeah, this is a quality-looking shot, this one. That should find the short stuff. And what are we looking at here, Henny? Setting up here from about 155. Oh, what a shot by our leader. Putting for birdie here. Surely it's going to. He just keeps putting a gap on the rest of the field. What a putt to hold. And now that finds him in first place. Two holes to go, Luke. Can they hang on? Opting for the five wood. Outstanding approach shot. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. OK, let's get back to the action. There's part of about six feet coming up. This is their look at birdie. Oh, that's a ripper. I like it. Two in a row. Still in the lead now after that hole. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. The closing hole of Innersbrook's Copperhead course is also the final hole of the Snake Pit. And this one here has everything going against it. Lay it back and you're going to have a long second shot back up the hill. But if you take driver and find the fairway, you'll be rewarded with a very short second shot. This is looking pretty good in the air. That's a lovely shot here at the 18th and a chance for Birdie at the last. And a fantastic look upcoming. Just didn't drop. Well, what a wonderful display this has been. Hold this putt, and you'll sign off on a 60. And as that putt drops to the bottom, Rich, they are now the Valspar champion. What a performance. Yeah, what a performance, what a win. I mean, just this player was just amazing all week long. And Rich, mark that down as one of the outstanding wins we'll see this season. It's always impressive when you see a player outshine their fellow competitors because all of these players are really good, but this player made everybody in the field look very, very average. So good was their performance. Well, that just about concludes our coverage. I'm Luke Elvey, and on behalf of Rich Beam, plus all the hard-working folks at HP Studios, it's good night for now.
Sports in a race for the FedEx Cup. We're at the Valero Texas Open. Today's coverage is a booth. And it's hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi, Luke. I'm very happy to be following this featured group because there are rumours of a rivalry brewing between these two players. Well, it looks like this player is aiming to beat Lexi Thompson, which very few people can boast. This should be an exciting showdown, Henny. Uh, Luke, Lexi's young but has been on tour for about 30, 40 years, it seems. She's been playing forever. She doesn't lack an experience. She can do it all. Not to mention, you'll be looking at her back for most of the day because she'll outdrive you. Yes, Lexi loves the long ball and so do we. Good luck in this rivalry because when Lexi gets on top, it's very hard to beat her. Well struck. Well, this is some lovely momentum to take into the tournament. Coming off a last start win, Rich. Can't think of any better momentum. Obviously, the players firing on all cylinders. Sit back, watch, and enjoy it. A chance for a booty if this goes down. Ooh, nice line. Always nice to hold those for a booty. Back-to-back -back birdies moving the right direction there, Luke. Now moving over to Lexi Thompson. She's two strokes behind her rival this week. Glancing at the scoreboard, and they're currently sitting in first place. Lexi Thompson holds second. Uh, Rich, let's head to the par three third, the first of our uh, shorter holes. You really hope that the wind is not blowing into your face on this tee shot and making it that much more difficult and longer. This green is perched up high. There's runoffs all around the left-hand side and the back portion of it, and obviously you want no part of coming up short. Players that find this green will find it difficult to two-putt as there's lots of humps and bumps and swales in it. Lexi Thompson coming off a bogey at her last hole. And that will take her to three off the lead. Not bad. The ladies' game has been uh, dominated by Koreans for such a long time, but uh, America has been able to have this resurgence basically off the back of Lexi Thompson and the generation she's started to inspire. Lexi Thompson is so fun to watch because she's got a very unique swing and when you look at it you, you kind of look back and you go okay that went a long way okay that went right at the hole and she's got such control over a golf ball it, it's amazing and the winds are going to continue to pile up for her year after year. I'm blown away by the fact that she is so aggressive on every single shot. There is no laying up in her game, and I love that. Now, that might cost her a few wins, but I tell you what, she's going to have a lot of wins because of that as well. I love the way she plays the game. It's exciting. Nicely done. After a very consistent run of play over the last half a dozen starts or so, Rich, this player's coming with a whole heap of confidence, and they look to me to be one of the players to beat. Do you agree? We've seen this player time and time again contend for tournaments, and it is no surprise to see him doing it once again this week. It is so fun watching this player. They're in top form. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Our leader is up by a whopping six shots now. Time to see what this par four has in store. 
Players must find the fairway, avoiding that bunker down the right-hand side, but from there, second shot is up the hill to a green that runs away from the players ever so slightly, but still going in with a short iron into this par four. A birdie is definitely makeable. From about 100 yards. Going with the pitching wedge here. This is beautiful to watch. Well, the practice is paying off here, Luke. This player is relentless. Nice one. Fourth booty of the day. And that will take him to four under. Our current leader is enjoying an eight-stroke advantage. The par three seventh rich has this uh, big cavernous bunker that sits right in the front center of the green. And it's a triple tier green as well, Luke. It shares it with the third hole. Anything missed out to the right will be fine, although you'll be in a low area that will be difficult to get it super close. But yes, you must avoid the bunker on the left-hand side. It is cavernous, as you say. Now, this one's from downtown. Little birdie look in here. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? The perfect leave. Uphill can be firm. Ooh. Well hold. Let's move on. Well, this player's mighty fine. Their lead is now nine after that performance. Aggressive play here. Going with driver off the tee. It looked like it came out of a cannon. Well, the Valero Texas Open is uh, such a hugely popular and famous event in this great state of Texas. I know as a proud Texan Beamer, this was one you wanted to win at some stage in your life. You get the cowboy boots for winning here. But TPC San Antonio, it really sorts out the players, doesn't it? It does that and possibly more, Luke. I, I have to say that coming to this tournament since its inception here at TPC, San Antonio, I was a little dumbfounded on exactly how to play it because there was danger everywhere. It's just one of these golf courses where it's relentless, where you just don't feel like you stand on any particular shot and feel like it's easy, like it's you can breathe easily and go ahead and let it go. Maybe on one or two holes, but that's about it. There is danger seemingly everywhere especially off the tee around this golf course. Most notably, the ninth hole where one player hit his first shot to the right, and then it stayed right, and then stayed right, 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 and then all added up to a 16. So there you go. I think that's the highest score ever recorded in a PGA Tour event as well, a 16. Where? At TPC San Antonio. Oh, just missed. Just three feet to the cup. Let's take a look at Lexi Thompson, shall we? She's currently trailing her rival. Let's see what happens here. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks right now. Here we go, Rich. In the lead, late in the championship. It's exciting. Well, after nine, so far, so good. It's great to see these two players stepping up, getting the best out of the games. It'll be interesting to see exactly who's going to be ahead at the end of the tournament. That tee shot looks pretty good. How much did the win last week give them the confidence to perhaps pull it off again here and go back to back? A massive win last week, looking to double up again this week. I got to say, they're building off all the good things they did last week. A win could definitely happen. Always well, nice to have a birdie putt. Was on a good line. Well, it was a wonderful approach shot, wasn't it? But unfortunately, having to settle for par. Leading by a phenomenal 12 strokes after that one. But this is quite an astonishing performance by our leader. Their advantage now out to double digits. I'm not sure if the chase back is good enough to catch them. Ah, uh, great shot. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? This is looking around 115 yards out had a fantastic drive what are we looking at for this part henny careful not to leave this one short it's back uphill and nothing worse than leaving an uphill putt short appears to have overcooked this one well rich think they can make this one 
look, I gotta say, I'm really not liking their chances here, but you never know, stranger things have happened. Now moving over to Lexi Thompson. Yeah, she's down, she's behind her rivals scooting ahead. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. Rich, this par 4 12th, uh, really challenging, especially around the green. This tee shot is underrated in difficulty-wise. This is not an easy tee shot as this fairway pitches from left to right. You want to skirt the bunker down the left-hand side as best possible to find the fairway. Second shot from there goes straight uphill and surrounded by two of the deepest bunkers on the golf course. As they say, Luke, everything is bigger in Texas, and these bunkers are proof of that. Okay, time to return to the action. Getting ready to play their third. Oh, yes! What a shot! Chip in for birdie. That's always a nice feeling. Well, I think that warrants another look. Let's see that again. Great feel, great judge, great speed. Yeah, I like this. And staying right where they were in today's rankings after that. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. That's some good golf right there. Trying to get to six under now with this putt. All right, guys, this for two birdies in a row. Didn't quite judge the speed on that one. This one's looking good. And in it goes for the par. Let's take a look at Lexi Thompson, shall we? She's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. And let's see what that shot did to the leaderboard. And still in top spot after that hole. Keep it going. And I don't give the rest of the field much hope today. Our leader is way out in front in this final round. Absolutely tattooed that one. Time for the second shot at the 14th. Wonderfully played. And here we are with the third shot. Didn't that look good for a long time? The chance to move to six under the card with this putt. Now that's how you roll the rock. And another one goes. And with it, an increase of his lead. And that will take him to six under. And looking at the standings now, and they're currently in first place, ahead of Tiger Woods, who's second. This is quite an astonishing performance by our leader. Their advantage now out to double digits. I'm not sure if the chase back is good enough to catch them. Lookout world was his statement when he came out on the Pro Tour and we look back in the greatness in sports right across all sport in the world. Has one player or one athlete had a greater impact on their sport more than Tiger Woods did for golf? I, I hate to say no because I also look back at the sport, Luke, when Arnold Palmer came through. Um, good looking fella and just kind of came from a blue collar background and I kind of think that Arnold Palmer paved the way for a Tiger Woods then then go out and dominate because golf was already on the radar it just wasn't nearly as much on the radar uh, as it is now because of Tiger but I think because of what what Arnold Palmer did um, he set the, the groundwork for all of this but in saying that, in the modern era, in the modern game, to be fair, and you look at every sport across the books, and I don't care whether you're talking about you know, Tom Brady, LeBron James right now, uh, it, it's, I don't think you have a bigger player globally, uh, with the exception of maybe Messi, 
for Ronaldo than Tiger Woods. Uh, I just think that from a global standpoint, Tiger Woods, whenever he shows his face anywhere, people lose their minds. Like uh, grown men lose their minds if they get a glimpse of Tiger Woods from 50 yards away. I've seen it before, Luke, and I'll see it again, but it, it never seems to amaze me, baffle me, make me giggle a little bit. Like, holy cow, this guy is, this guy's Elvis. He's Elvis Presley. I mean, because Elvis was the biggest guy in the world as far as I could tell. Um, so I, it's just, it's mind-boggling how big Tiger Woods is in this game uh, and continues to be and will forever be. This is on a great line. Yeah, a bit long on that one. This putt just five feet away from the hole. Well, the leader giving a little hope for the rest of the field there as they put down a bogey on the scorecard. Now moving over to Lexi Thompson. Birdied their last hole. Let's take a look at the current standings. Currently in first position. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. Well, while the closing hole at TPC San Antonio can be reached in two, Rich, it's all set up by the tee shot. Tee shot must find the fairway. If not, you have water hazards left and bunkers right that will gobble up that second shot if you're slightly out of position. Uh, it's a brave one. Driver off the deck. Pretty good shot there. Sitting at five under for the day. Currently leading. Oh, this is on a fantastic line. Is it the right distance? Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to chip this in and win the tournament? Well, that was a Texas-sized performance by our champion. They have now added the Valero Texas Open to their list of wins. After this victory, Luke, I'm pretty sure this player is going to have a little bigger hitch in his giddy up. And I've got to give props to my boy in the booth, Rich Beam. I think you picked this one at the start of the week, didn't you? Luke, it's just, it wasn't a difficult pick, let's be honest. This player has been consistent all season long. Getting the victory, no surprise whatsoever. Really good stuff. Well, that just about concludes our coverage. On behalf of Rich Beam, I'm Luke Helvey. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.